Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Board Games, where we pretty much just take a few games that we've been playing lately and give our thoughts on them. Yeah, we have a handful of games this time that we're going to talk about that actually fit kind of uh, the same ish theme. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, we have garden themed games that we're going to be talking about today. Yes, we have put together a few uh, garden themed games and we'll be discussing them towards the tail end of the video. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, we wanted to discuss a couple of things going on in the Kickstarter world. Uh, first of which is Hamlet. Hamlet, which was a board game that was published by Mighty Boards last year, which was pretty popular. Yeah, right? it was a really big uh, one, a big release over at Essence Spiel 2022. Mm -hmm. They just announced an upcoming uh, expansion for the game called Hamlet by the Lake, which which is going to be coming into Kickstarter over the summer. And so to celebrate that, they are having an ongoing uh, event that is going to be going on for a week called Hamlet Week. And so this includes some events as well as giveaways that are going to be hosted by some content creators. And so today we're going to be participating in Hamlet Week by giving away a copy of the base game plus the new expansion pledge. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a pledge that is going to be for the upcoming Kickstarter. So it's not going to be something um, shipping right away. But it is going to be worldwide. That's right. Yeah. So it's 18 and over. Mm -hmm. um, like Monique said, this is coming in the summer. I believe it's going to be uh, launching sometime in July. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for that. If you are interested in Hamlet or if you don't know about the game, we'll leave a link to the BGG description down in the description below. And we'll also leave a link to the Mighty Boards website where they have all the information regarding Hamlet Week. So mm -hmm. if you'd like to check out any of the other events or giveaways, you can do so uh, by going to their page. Mm -hmm. So to enter, please leave a comment down below if you'd like to discuss any of the games that we talk about today, feel free to do so, but make sure you include the hashtag more Hamlet, please. Yes, this is how we're going to be able to differentiate people who just want to comment versus people who want to both comment as well as enter into the contest. That's right. And keep in mind that this is 18 and up, uh, only one entry per person. It is worldwide and it'll be running for a week. So we will choose the winners in about a week. All the details will be in the description of the video. Mm -hmm. Now be very diligent. Uh, this is a no purchase necessary. Uh, in 2020, 2023, YouTube is still full of scammers and yeah. bots, so Ugh. just be aware that you will not be asked to provide anything other than um, maybe your name and address for shipping. Mm -hmm. um, but we would direct you over to Mighty Boards directly, uh, so there is no purchase necessary. Please be diligent about this. Scammers will sometimes steal our profile picture and pretend like they're us, so just be mindful about when the giveaway actually ends, and we will include the usernames of those who win in the description mm -hmm. as well. So again, that is hashtag more Hamlet, please, and thank you to Mighty Boards for sponsoring this giveaway. Mm -hmm. All right, and so the other thing going on in the crowdfunding world is there's a game that just launched on GameFound that we actually had the opportunity to play recently. And so we figured we'd just sort of talk about it. Sure. It's a game called Conquest Princess Fashion is Power. Yes, this game is designed by Peter Yang as well as Seppi Yoon. It's published by Fight in a Box. Mm -hmm. um, this game is a fully cooperative one to four player experience where you're basically in constant crisis mode and you're trying to put out a bunch of fires to attain your goal before the game beats you. That's right. Uh, it is tough. It has a very specific theme to it. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, just for full disclosure, we're in, this is not a sponsored uh, video or anything like that. That by them. We have covered a couple of games in the past, mm -hmm. a really long time ago by Fight in the Box. Um, uh, Hedgehog Mouse, Hop was Hedge, one. Hedgehog Hop when you first started channel, as well as Mouse, Mouse Cat, Cat Cheese, Cheese Cucumber. Cucumber. Yes. Yes. And so this game <laughs> is very different from the other two. The other two were much lighter. Um, this one is a fully cooperative, very puzzly, almost sort of brain melting mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, there's like a, almost like a bunch of mini games going on and everything is kind of compressing in on mm -hmm. you and you have to kind of manage these different fires on different boards. Yeah. Uh, the game comes with, I believe, four different scenarios. There's a tutorial and then scenario one, two, and three. Right, right. It's not a campaign style game, so you can just jump into whichever module you want to play. Yes, um, but there but is a story. Exactly, yeah, but there's a story. them all if you want to play them in order. So what you're going to be doing is going to be dependent on the mission itself, mm -hmm. but the basic concept of the game is everybody plays as this like robot princess <laughs> where fashion is power yep. because there's literally a deck uh, that will determine whether or not you lose the game mm -hmm. because if you lose all those cards those uh, I think it's like fashion power-up cards yeah then you lose and so everybody has their own sort of robot board that has a middle core where everybody has like an asymmetric uh, power mm -hmm. that they can utilize or you can share with others uh, depending on where you are on the different boards. Mm -hmm. And on your robot, you can assign different power-ups to the different parts of your suit. So <laughs> that's where that thematic integration comes in. And the game features an action selection mechanism that uh, has 
is laid out by your own player board, mm -hmm. that is also quite puzzly because if you take certain actions in a sequence, then you'll gain a certain ability depending on who you are. Yeah, so like in the first tutorial, or sorry, the first scenario, mm -hmm. um, there's kind of this like space invaders board that's kind of coming in and if these uh, these creatures kind of land on your ship, they, then you can take damage. Uh, there's also this centipede that's kind of spitting out this goo uh, mm -hmm. that you need to kind of manage also. And ultimately what you're trying to do in this first scenario is you're trying to collect the right set of dice that are kind of sprinkled and laid out all over the playing surface. And you're trying to save these different pets. There's four different pets. Uh, the goal of this particular scenario is you're trying to get all four pets or not die by losing all your power because again, fashion is power. <laughs> but you have to claim the dice in a certain order mm -hmm. and you also have to uh, try to defeat the bad guys who are there. Yes. And there's a whole bag building mechanic mm -hmm. that actually determines the outcome of your, your battles. Yeah, so think so. of it like you're trying to shoot uh, into into space to kind of destroy uh, this impending kind of alien force that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So there's a bag building mechanism where there's some misses in the bag, there's mm -hmm. some hits, and also some damage in the bag. So uh, it's a shared bag, so it's not like I have my own and mm -hmm. the next player has their own. So if I'm pulling out a bunch of misses and I'm unsuccessful on my turn, then I'm increasing the odds or the chances of somebody else being successful on their turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, it is fully cooperative if you... Uh, play a two-player game, then each player controls two of the players because you always play with all four. Mm -hmm. um, and like we were mentioning, it is quite uh, brain melty because not only are you trying to uh, actually complete the mission and collect those things in order and defeat the enemies, mm -hmm. but you're also trying to protect the tiara, which is like your, your ship, your ship yeah. because there are different sections of the ship that you can kind of walk around. And if your ship takes damage, then certain abilities or certain benefits are not going to be available to you. Right. So it's a lot of putting out fires while still trying to complete the mission. It's yeah. really hard. It's actually. one of those games <laughs> where uh, the crisis of the game escalates as it goes on. Mm -hmm. So at first, maybe you only lose two of these power cards, but as the game goes on, you start to lose three, mm -hmm. four, five. And there's kind of this double-edged sword with these power cards because these power cards not only give you an ability, but as you use them, you're now depleting it from your overall global health stack. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of weigh this option of like, we could really use some of these power-up cards, but because I'm using it, now we're going to be dying so much sooner. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. early on in the game, you really want to try to put out as many fires as you can because it starts to compound on top of mm -hmm. you and becomes even more and more challenging. So it's really interesting. Um, it's really tough, and I believe the, the prototype is still uh, kind of under construction because mm -hmm. right now it's quite large. It's quite sprawling as of right now. Yeah, it's in, mm -hmm. it's in its early form. If you'd like to check out a playthrough, um, Alex from Board Game Co. actually did a solo playthrough of it, which mm -hmm. is quite good. Yep. So we'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Um, but we really just wanted to talk about it because I know this theme is going to resonate with some people and really not resonate with others. And we wanted to at least discuss what kind of a game this is. Mm -hmm. um, just so, you know, people can potentially hear about it. Sure. So again, this game is currently on GameFound. Uh, this is not sponsored at all, but we will leave a link to their campaign down below in case you'd like to check it out. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the game. So today we're going to be talking about four games. By the way, we're back from Japan. Did we mention that? We're back, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> and uh, these are the games that we pretty much played um, over and over while we were trying to get over jet lag, which yeah. I think is gone now. It's gone. It's official. Yeah, we always talk yeah. about our jet lag yeah. <laughs> on our channel whenever we come back from a trip. And this was no different. We are going to be releasing a, um, a Japan wrap-up video which we are currently working on mm -hmm. uh, and it'll probably go live in like two days place, yeah. so stay tuned for that all right first up in our garden themed uh, set of games we have yes this one is from 25th century games this is called garden bow yes now this one was highly anticipated on i believe one of our lists Gen Con? I, Gen Con, maybe? I think last year's Gen, our Gen Con our most Gen Con. anticipated games. Yeah, so I could be wrong. We got it. We finally got to play it. Um, this is designed by David Abelson as well as Alex Johns and again, published by 25th Century Games. 25th mm -hmm. Century Games has so many games that have come out yeah. over the past like, year or two. Yes. So I, I do enjoy the fact that there's a, a large breadth of, of different games that they have. Yes. This one is a garden-themed game where you're basically moving around a rondelle mm -hmm. and you're trying to pick up different different um, seeds yeah. <laughs> to then make plants yes. of which then can on the next level could flower and try to score you points. Yes. So yes. You're, you're basically building out this tableau of like type um, seedlings and trying to grow them into plants so that you can then score bigger points by putting flowers on top of them. Yeah. It's your garden of 
sorts. Mm -hmm. And so the main board is just, it just consists of different stacks of these uh, sprouts. And so on your turn, you're going to be moving clockwise around the board, always moving and either moving onto a, a stack space mm -hmm. or onto a circular space. Depending on which spot you move to, that'll determine what kind of action you get to take, whether it's taking uh, the topmost uh, sprout tile and adding it to your garden or taking the resources available at that, that spot. Because each spot has a depicted set mm -hmm. of resources on it. Or if you move on to a circular spot, you're going to be taking one of the plants from the plant stacks mm -hmm. and placing it on top of sprouts. And so each right. type of plant will tell you what kind of sprouts they can fit on top of. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> you're going to be playing the flower cards that are from your hand, the flower uh, tiles that everybody starts the game with. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always going to be different. There are two different types of flower tiles. You have like the basic like intro game kind that, of tiles. Yeah, kind of yeah. like intro starter game, base game. And then you have the advanced tiles, which you can actually do some sort of a draft uh, before starting the game. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. The game ends, I believe, when like uh, four of the stacks on the main board mm -hmm. are depleted. Yep. And then you only score points for your plants as well as your flowers. So the two larger size uh, tiles. Mm -hmm. You don't score anything for, for the sprouts. So the the basic game uh, tiles are, are really, really basic mm -hmm. in terms of scoring. They'll really just give you a certain number of points. <laughs> It'll say on the flower itself. Yeah, it's like have this flower and this flower next to each other, get 16 points, something like that. Yeah, or even more simple than that. I think it's literally just the flower tile will give you 18 points. Mm -hmm. but you have to cover up uh, two plant tiles in order to score those points. And so the plant tiles won't be scoring you anything, which means you're probably gonna try to uh, place it over two really low scoring plant tiles mm -hmm. because the plant tiles actually uh, score higher the further you get into the stack. And then the advanced flower tiles are much more thinky, yeah. You gotta really plan out like your, your whole tableau section as to where you're putting the seeds to get the plants so mm -hmm. that you can then put down this really uh, clever or like difficult like flower combination to try to score the most amount. So yeah. the game mechanics are fairly, I mean, very light. You just move your, your pawn, you take one of three different types of actions depending on where you move to, mm. and then you basically uh, move on to the next player. Yeah, so, so game, you know, game structure-wise, very simple. And mm -hmm. the game also plays really quickly. I think it says, yeah, 30 to 60 minutes, and it plays two to four players. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also beautiful. Like, this is that is the whole reason why uh, this was on, I think I was the one who chose this yeah, just, on that just, list. Just art alone just drew just us in. Yeah. art alone. I really love plant themes or nature themes, and this, this game is really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, the game play though is really quite extreme yeah <laughs> like the the base game is like really 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 simple where um it was really it was really falling flat i mean we learned the game using we always try to start with like the base game uh instructions right. and then we'll move on to the advanced or the experienced version mm -hmm. uh and we were really it was really just kind of like a quiet just going through the motions kind of gameplay you're talking about the base game the, like base the basic game. like the the non-drafting yes basic tiles game yeah it yeah. was not uh exhilarating at all mm -hmm. um and then we played the more advanced version and that was really kind of paralyzing for me yeah for this for how simple the mechanisms are just deciding like what do i need to draft now how am i going to get this particular flower done mm -hmm. because it takes multiple steps so then it became like almost like too paralyzing yeah, yeah that's like paralyzing. probably a good word to say like you're just kind of like ap just like ah even before know. the game started the end game scoring criteria on those cards are so uh difficult to try to maximize that mm -hmm. at, even at the start of the game, you're trying to plan out your garden uh, based off of those cards mm -hmm. and it makes it really paralyzing yeah. for me. Yeah, overall this one for me, it's, it's just okay. Uh, this is not one that I'm finding myself saying like, I, I need to play this again and again and again. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy the discovery aspect of this game, but it's not one that I'm kind of driven to want to go back to over and over again. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sure you can relate to this. Every game that you kind of have in your collection, there's a certain uh, mood that you that you are typically in when you want to play it. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really, I, I can't really think of a <laughs> time where I would want to play the game because the two modes are just too extreme. Mm -hmm. That's essentially it. We would love to know what your thoughts were on this one because it was such a, such a strange one for us yeah, <laughs> in terms was. of the experience. Mm -hmm. yep.
All right, next up in our garden themed <laughs> day, we have the Butterfly Garden. Mm -hmm. So this is a game designed by Steve Finn and published by Dr. Finn's Games. If you're not familiar with them, um, Steve Finn has designed a ton of games and we tend to cover a lot of them because we really like his style of designing. It's, it's like simple, simple but clever at the same time. Yeah. One of my favorite games of all time is Biblios, which is one of his designs as well. Mm -hmm. So um, he basically, anytime he comes out with something, I'm totally willing to try it because yes. he typically designs games that play in roughly 30 to 45 minutes max. Yeah, it's always a uh, really quick, low rules overhead and very clever. There's always mm -hmm. something in there that, that makes you go, ah, I yeah. see what he did there. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so um, in this game, you are trying to rehome butterflies, I believe. You're, you're capturing butterflies to put them in 104 locations. There's a museum, there's the university, uh, the, university yeah. the zoo, and one fourth location, that which I I'm forgetting remember. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so the way that the game works is each player has a hand of these butterfly cards, and the cards are numbered. I think it's like one to 55 or something, mm -hmm. and each number is unique. The higher the value, the uh, fewer the number of butterflies are actually showing on your card and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that number one will have a lot of butterflies. The butterflies come in different colors and patterns and sometimes you'll have a rainbow butterfly, which is wild. Mm -hmm. And the way that it works is each round, uh, players simultaneously select a card from their hand yep. to play in front of them. And that is going to determine the order that you get to actually take your action. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the table will also be a certain number of face-up butterfly cards, depending on the number of players mm -hmm. and so in a two-player game you'll have three and so in this turn order depending on what card you played you get to choose your first you basically have first dibs, first dibs yeah. as to which butterfly card you want to uh, get to put into your hand for the next round mm -hmm. And so the whole reason why we're doing this is because on the location cards will show a certain combination of butterflies that you'll need to capture into your jar <laughs> in order to satisfy that location right. for scoring at the end of the yeah. game. So it's like an order fulfillment game, essentially, but mm -hmm. it's like a public objective order fulfillment. So you're kind of racing towards um, everybody knows what everybody is trying to achieve at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, the card that I believe, if, if I remember, the card you played, the card that you played is will the one go that goes into your drawer, into your jar. Yeah, and the card that you selected from the ones in the middle goes will go into, into your, your hand, hand. for f for future use. Yes. Yeah. So the card that you played always goes into your jar. So it's like a multi-step process. You mm -hmm. have a card. You want to try to figure out, okay, do I value this card? Do I want to put it out there so that in the future I can get it back and put it into my my jar uh, so that the cards that are in my jar, those are the ones that can actually go out and be fulfilled by those uh, those public objectives. Yes, and the so you're, Yeah, so you're trying to set collect by having unique locations because you score more points that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just trying to get straight up the most amount of points that are on <laughs> these cards as well. Yes, there are points on the cards. Um, like Naveen mentioned, there's a set collection for uh, fulfilling or sending butterflies to different locations. Mm -hmm. um, there's also points that you get just for having a certain number of butterflies left over in your hand, as well as having the most number of butterflies left in your jar at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, there are also four different action types that can appear on these cards. So you can do things like moving somebody's net <laughs> after they already placed it um, on the cards in the middle of the table. You can switch out cards from your hand, from the deck, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a very simple game, but that mechanism of simultaneous play while also being able to score in certain ways at the end of the game makes mm -hmm. it pretty clever. Yeah, I like games where, and he, he designed this kind of like in Biblios, uh, where it's like this card is a setup for a future mm -hmm. kind of conveyor belt system where it's like this goes in and then now the thing I used to get that card out there is now going to get tucked under. So mm -hmm. there's kind of like this multi-step process that you yeah. have to think about. Um, because the objectives are all public, uh, then it becomes kind of like a, well, clearly Monique has two of these white butterflies, mm -hmm. and so I know I'm not going to be able to compete for that, so I need to do something else. And uh, we played with the advanced variant, I guess, where <laughs> um, you want to uh, score certain types of uh, butterfly combinations yes. because you have this hidden objective as well. Yeah. Um, I recommend playing with it because it just kind of gives you a justification and it's kind like, of a reason to go. It's an endangered species variant. Yeah. So you can either give everybody one and it'll be like their secret uh, butterfly type that'll mm -hmm. score them more points or you can play it face up where everybody tries to 
to knowingly get that certain type of butterfly, right. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's a variant that comes in the game. Yep. And so this is a very simple game. This is one of his lighter games that we've played mm -hmm. so far, yep. uh, which means if you're into the heavier, um, a little bit more complex games, it might not be your style. For us, it was maybe a little bit too light for a game that we would want to bring out more often. Yeah. Um, I think that if you're into people who are into butterflies or people who are into more relaxed gameplay, there's definitely a population of gamers who enjoy that sort of... Um, um, casual, relaxed playing style. This might be one that you might want to check out. Yep. But if you're not in one of those categories, then it might be too light. Yeah, like I don't think for you and I, we would pull this out and play. But with yeah. family over, if we were going to a, like a friend's house that does not play games, mm -hmm. this is definitely one of those ones that I would be totally like saying like, okay, let's put that in the bag because we could teach it very simply. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be bored by playing it. I would still enjoy my time. It's just not the ultimate gamer's game, if that makes sense, you know? <laughs> it's very fast. It is. Very yeah. simple, and it's very fast. So anyway, that's pretty much it. That is The Butterfly Garden mm -hmm. by Steve Finn. There you go. All right, moving on to the next game, which is actually not garden themed. Maybe no. this is just a plant themed it's plants, <laughs> episode. Yeah. This is a game called Evergreen. Yep. Ah, look how beautiful it is. Very right? Nice. Looks good. Yes, this is this uh, box art was was what kind of caught our eye mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning. But this is a game designed by I believe Hyomar Hak. I apologize if I mispronounced uh, your name. And it's published by Horrible Guild. And so in this game, each player has their own player board, and we are trying to grow a bunch of uh, trees in uh, strategic places, depending on where you are in the game, in order to collect the most sunlight, I suppose, and score, score the most, most amount of points yep. at the end of the game. <laughs> it is very uh, similar to another game called Photosynthesis, which was published a few years back by a different publisher, but by the same designer. Mm -hmm. And so that game, uh, everybody was building on the same board, and you're basically trying to build trees and steal the sunlight from other players. This is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Yeah. That was a very mean game. <laughs> I had played it once before, and I didn't really want to play it again because it made me just feel so bad ah, when okay. playing it. And so this version of the game is very different because everybody has their own player board. It's not take that -y at all, uh, but it, they're still playing your own sort of area control efficiency game. You're really only doing on your own take board. that to yourself if you do poor planning with where you're going to put out your trees. Yes. So it's not take that. It's it's efficiency. Yep. You're, you're trying to be um, as, as efficient as possible with your own player board. Mm -hmm. And so the way that the game works is there are these cards that you place in the center of the table. Depending on which card you draft, it'll determine what part of your board you get to take your action on, mm -hmm. as well as what type of bonus action that you get to take during that round. Yeah, because your board is made up of basically a planet with a bunch of different uh, terrain type mm -hmm. or kind of, uh, yeah, I think terrain, yeah, you terrain would say. Type. So like the forest, the tundra, things like that. So if you draft the card that associates with the tundra, all your actions must be performed in that particular section. Yes, and so actions are gonna be very simple. It's stuff like planting two sprouts. And so when you're actually making a tree, it always goes from a uh, sprout to small tree to big tree. Mm -hmm. The big trees are gonna score you the most amount of points, but when it comes to collecting sunlight, which is a little bit later in the round, they also cast a shadow. A larger shadow. A larger shadow. Yeah. The game actually is played over the course of four seasons, mm -hmm. and each season gets uh, shorter and shorter. And so at the end of a season, that is when you're going to collect sun sunlight from wherever the sun is around your board. Mm -hmm. It's going to rotate clockwise as the game progresses, but depending on where it is, that's gonna be the viewpoint that you're gonna be looking at your trees. And so I believe small trees cast a one space shadow, yep. which means anything that is uh, its height or shorter that is behind it is not going to get any sunlight or otherwise score you points. Yeah. And uh, the large trees cast a two space shadow. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to configure your trees in a way that score you the most amount of points throughout the entire game, right? If I plant a tree in season one, I still want it to be scoring me points in the last season, mm -hmm. even though the sun is going to be in a different spot around my board. Yeah, so there's a lot of planning that goes on with it. Like, okay, I know that this particular sprout, I want it to get to a big tree. I don't think I'll be able to get it to a big tree until the final season. So how safe can I keep this thing uh, over the next couple seasons so that it can actually grow mm -hmm. and I can use it to score points. You're also trying to score points for the largest forest. So mm -hmm. this is all orthogonally adjacent trees that are large next to trees, each, large right? trees that are next to each other. So because these trees start to cast shadows on each other, you're not going to score potentially points throughout the game, but you'll score a lot of points at the, the very forest. end game. 
Yeah, and so there's a lot of little rules that we didn't discuss that help you in maximizing your action efficiency. Um, in the original game photosynthesis, or in the earlier one, photosynthesis, there was an action uh, point mechanism there. In this game, your actions are all based off of the one action that you get per uh, round, as well as the bonus action that actually shows on the card that you drafted. So everybody gets a bonus action as well. And at the end of each round, there's always going to be a card that's not drafted that goes into the scoring uh, area. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the game, that's going to determine how many points um, each of the large trees are in the different sections of your board. Mm. So that that is an extra layer of thinking that you have to be focusing on throughout the game. Yeah, because the mechanism is on your turn, you pick one of the cards. Mm -hmm. If you're picking this card, then you're performing actions in this particular section of your earth board, meaning that they are not going to most likely score points at the very end of the game because it was something that you wanted to influence. So mm -hmm. there's kind of this like delicate balance of like, well, I've been doing a lot of stuff in the Tundra. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't want to select any more Tundra so I can get a greater multiplier at the very end of the mm -hmm. game. So then sometimes your opponent will be like, well, Monique has a ton of Tundra. So I need to take this Tundra card so she can't score it towards mm -hmm. the end and get a greater multiplier at the very end. Right. It's really quite clever, actually. Uh, first of all, it's beautiful. The components in this game match the beautiful artwork mm -hmm. at the front of the cover. It's yep. really, really high quality. Um, I will say that drafting mechanic, as well as the uh, end game scoring based off of the cards that were not drafted each round, mm -hmm. that is the one thing that makes the game not entirely uh, multiplayer solitaire. Mm -hmm. Because without that, it would be entirely... Uh, multiplayer solitaire. Yeah, There's you no just be take doing your that. Own thing. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not doing any crossover on anyone's boards, but you are keeping in mind other players when drafting cards from the middle, mm -hmm. uh, because that's going to determine everybody's end game score. Yeah, especially if there's like a 50 50 choice, and you're like, well, I can branch on this path, or well, Monique's doing really well there. Okay, I'm gonna take that card so mm -hmm. that she can't do it as well. Yeah. So otherwise, it is. It, I found it to be very clever. Mm -hmm. um, it's really puzzly. So if you like that kind of game where you kind of just like head down on your own player board uh, and thinking the whole time and uh, very aesthetically pleasing. So I know there's a population of gamers who uh, enjoy games much more when the components and the, the art quality is quite high. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of those games. Yeah, the, the board is uh, dual layered. Mm -hmm. So all the, the different tree pieces fit nice and snugly. Mm -hmm. I never felt like if I, you know, bumped it, everything was just going to go crashing down. It's like, I don't know where I left off. It's not know? like that, but I, I do, I don't know, my my fingers, I, I do tend to knock over my trees <laughs> yeah, you when I go to, there, I guess. to placing them. I mean, that's but a, if you're just going to knock stuff over, it makes sense. Yeah, but, it's not yeah. that it's not that unstable. It's not yeah, that bad. Exactly. <laughs> but otherwise, underneath this um, beautiful package, there is a, a good quality game there in terms of strategy. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I highly prefer this game over photosynthesis. I, I pretty much uh, might not ever play photosynthesis again just because that is a game that was just so mean. And this is almost the complete opposite in feel. So I don't have anything to compare it to because I have not played photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of want to experience that meanness in oh. photosynthesis. <laughs> Go uh, for it. I know you won't play it with me, so, you know. <laughs> Anyway, that is Evergreen. Uh, this is a game that was released, I believe, last year. Mm -hmm. If you played it, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave a comment down below. Yep. All right, the last game we wanted to talk about that kind of rounds out our garden-themed games mm -hmm. is a game called Power Plants. Uh -huh. This one is designed by Adam Dalton and published by Kids Table Board Games. Mm -hmm. It's an abstract strategy game that plays one to five players. Yes, and so in this game, players are going to be building a shared or contributing to a shared garden. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit fantasy-themed because there's a wizard that you're going to be placing on your tile to be putting into the garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, the game actually comes with, I think eight different plants, depending on which version of the game you have. This is the regular version, but I know that there's a Kickstarter edition out there. Came with an extra one. That I, I think came with an extra yeah. plant. But every game that you play, you only choose five of them to play with. Mm -hmm. And this is important because during setup, each uh, plant type has a board that'll determine the types of actions that you can take when uh, placing that tile in the garden. Mm -hmm. And each plant type has two different types that you can play with. There's right. more like the basic power and then there's like a more advanced power. And we kind of just mix in like two or three of the advanced powers every time we play. Yeah, with the with the advanced powers, if you do all five advanced, it can get really heady and kind yeah. of real complex. Yeah, and so during setup, you're going to um, align all those plants into a column depending on uh, if the power 
power is like a morning power, a midday or an evening power. And this will make sense why in a second. So you line them up in a column and then every player has a hand of two of these plant tiles. Mm -hmm. uh, the component quality here, by the way, is really, really high, good, yeah. uh, which is on par with kids' table board games, what they usually put out. Mm -hmm. And also full disclosure, we um, we have been sponsored to cover previous kids' table board games in the past when not they run one. a kick Kickstarter, yeah. but not this one. Mm -hmm. So on your turn, you're going to add one of those uh, plant tiles into the garden. You're gonna connect it to around the garden. And then you're gonna choose to either sprout or grow. If you sprout, you get to take the action of the plant tile that you just added, the sprout action, because mm -hmm. each uh, plant card has a sprout action and it has a grow action, mm -hmm. and it's going to be different depending on what type of plant you're playing with. These actions are gonna be stuff like putting a sprite into your garden, because it, this is basically an area control game where at the end of the game, you will score points depending on the number of these plant tiles you have your sprouts on. Sprites? Yes. Sprites, <laughs> yeah. All these, uh, all these actions, ultimately what you're trying to do is you're trying to gain control over large masses of, of different uh, plant terrain types. Yeah, like type. Like, like type, types. yes, exactly. There are some negative ones that you want to avoid, so mm -hmm. it's not always as simple as you'd like it to be. Yes. Um, so you talked about sprout, which is just you're affecting the tile that you just played out. Yes. Growth is the other one, or to grow is the other type of action you can uh, take. Yes, and so if you choose to grow, instead you can use the growth action of all of the bordering uh, plant tiles, basically mm -hmm. the tiles that you just attached to, yep. if that makes sense. And uh, the order that you have to go in is from top to bottom in that column. So that's why it's important to, to line up all of the plant powers in that, that, uh, that fashion. Yeah, so you resolve from day, midday to night, yes. depending on the, the type of plant that's there. Yes, exactly. And before choosing this action, some of the plant types will also allow you to place a sprite onto the plant that you just added. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really complicated <laughs> now that I'm explaining it. It's hard to but... explain, yeah, just like without like, here is the yes. board and this is kind of a demonstration of it. Yes, but the actual gameplay is very simple. Like when you're in it, it, it has a very nice uh, uh, timing to it. You place, you choose your action, you do all this stuff, and you move on to the next player. Mm -hmm. And you go around and around and around until the bag of tiles is run out because at the end of your turn, you always drop a new uh, plant tile into your hand. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the meat of the game is going to be in terms of what actions you're taking, depending on the plants that are in the game. Mm -hmm. And that can be quite tricky to learn. Yeah. So the first time we played it, oh my gosh, there was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> I struggled, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a very good game, actually. I, I, yeah. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but I'm not too good at abstract strategy games. And so I was finding myself putting, putting myself into vulnerable positions. And then Monique was able to come in, counteract, and clear me out of those positions. So now, uh, yeah, it's 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 tough, but it's actually a very enjoyable experience. Just trying to puzzle out like I need to protect myself on mm -hmm. these particular plants because you can stack up um, sprites onto a particular tile. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only one player per tile, so as you start to add sprites, they mm -hmm. basically bounce each other off. So you have to be careful with the way you position your sprites so that you can maintain control throughout the course of the game. Yeah, the game is actually quite strategic. Um, I know it's published by Kids Table Board Games, which is typically, uh, they typically put out games that are kid friendly, uh, but this is by all means not a kids game. Uh, yeah. It's it, The first time you play it, it's actually quite difficult to learn. I was kind of alluding to that earlier. Because of the whole sprout versus growth uh, action mechanic. Uh, when you sprout, you're choosing the action type of the tile that you place on versus growth, which is everything else. Everything else. Yeah. But the verbiage on the actual plant powers is also tricky. It's like place a sprite on the type of plant tiles that the wizard is on, but not on the wizard tile. So there's a lot of like of contradictions yes. in terms of the, the actual powers. The language of the powers, yeah. Yeah, and when you play the game, you really want to know the plant powers in advance. You need to know because them, Because yeah. it's, it's actually a very strategic game, and it's going to determine what you do from the very beginning of the game, which tile you place and which action you decide to yeah. take. Because all of these powers, they basically influence how you're going to get area control in the game. Mm -hmm. So if you're unfamiliar and you're just like, you know what, we'll just figure it out as we go along, 
you'll find yourself about a third of the way through going, oh, had I known that pl- that that plant was there, I, I, I would I would not have done that. So yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. really set yourself up properly at the beginning of the game and really understand what everything does. Yes, it's not a casual game. <laughs> this no. is a very strategic game. Yeah. The first time you play it, play it with the basic uh, powers. Um, it's not like in Garden Bow where everything was like way too simple. Like it's okay to start with them. Mm-hmm. And if you're playing with younger gamers, there is, I believe, a family version of the game that you can kind of read about. I believe they call it the training mode. We did not try it, so we can't speak on it, but just know that that option is there. So anyway, that's about it about Power Plants. I really enjoyed um, my gameplay of it. This is one that we're going to be keeping in our collection for a while. Um, I think it's great that it plays up to five players. We have not played it at five, so just keep that in mind. But it is one of those games that can play quickly. And at two, it feels a lot more... um, You can control a lot more, and at higher player counts, it's... It becomes, it's still very strategic, but it's still like, there are turns that yeah. you can't really control what's going to be happening. Yeah, right? there was a, in the two player experience, there was a lot of like push pull. Like, I went yeah. in, I took you out of a place so that I could then, you know, come back in. Mm-hmm. But then you kind of counteract that at a different location. And I'm like, I, uh, okay, I got to not focus there. I'm going to focus here instead. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in a three player game, it, it feels like it's a little bit more just kind of everyone keeps each other in check a little bit. Yeah, it's And a, we haven't not played the five player. Yeah, it's moving. It's constantly moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a two player game, especially, it's all about seizing the opportunities as they arise. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not very good at abstract strategy games. I do enjoy uh, a bit of area control. This particular combination of the way the simplicity of the design, but also the complexity of the individual plants Mm -hmm. makes me want to play it more and more. Yeah, and I will say I'm not a fan of area control games almost at all. And this has a a fair amount that the largest, the bigger scale of what you're doing here is technically area control. But I did not find that to be obnoxious or or that stressful at Mm -hmm. all. So anyway, that is Power Plants by Kids Table Board Games. If you've played this one before, please let us know your thoughts. And that's that. There you go. All right, there you have it. We discussed a few games today, including a couple that are in the crowdfunding world. Again, uh, there is an ongoing giveaway that is going to be going on for about a week, hosted by Mighty Boards with our channel. So if you'd like to enter, it's hashtag more Hamlet, please. Mm -hmm. And we've included all the details in the description below. Well, thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.